we're about to do our fourth hover test. Hopefully this time actually works. Three, two, one. That was hovering. This video is sponsored by KiwiCo, the best way to learn how to make things right at home. Let me tell you something. There's a reason that we're five years behind Back to the Future 2 in the creation of hoverboards. It's freaking hard. In fact, a few years ago, a team of students at Full Sail University tried with me, but with only a two week time window, it didn't quite work. So you guys remember Jimmy. Because of science, He's the co-op that we hired to make me a hoverboard. In part one of the series, Jimmy took us through all the theory of how a hoverboard should work. Developing that theory alone took several months. He then built all the components to bring that theory to reality. But the thing is, nothing ever exactly goes according to plan. Everything can look good on paper, but until you test it out for the first time, you never really know. Jimmy had a hard deadline to finish the hoverboard because the video was supposed to come out on December 10th and his co-op term was almost over. So Jimmy put everything together and we thought we were good to go. Then the problem started. We couldn't get all eight motors running simultaneously and we didn't know why. But Jimmy had a deadline, so he persevered. He stayed light, he worked on weekends, and he drank more Red Bull than a frat house on spring break. And he got working. So it was time for the very first test. What he'd been working towards, his entire co-op. Bad speed controller. All it takes is one bad apple, as they say. So we had to order new speed controllers, which doesn't work well for the impending deadline. Generally, we want to make sure everything design-wise is finalized before moving on to aesthetics. But we don't really have that luxury right now, so Jimmy is actually over at Twin City Graphics right now, working on assembling the board at the same time it's being wrapped. Let's hope that speed controller comes in time. How's it going, Jimmy? Pretty good, man. Uh, board's coming together well. Mike is killing it over there, and I uh, guess I'm doing okay. My new speed controllers are here. The board is wrapped and partially assembled, let's get the rest of this thing together. As stated before, we're going to be using eight magnet wheels. Each magnet wheel will have its own dedicated ESC. A magnet wheel will draw around 200 amps at about 50 volts. That's about 80 kilowatts of power from all eight wheels. That's the equivalent of about four lightsabers, four Colin Furs drift trikes, or about three times the power the actual shop can draw from the grid. Gen Zays hooked us up with these batteries to make this thing actually work. If you haven't heard of Gen Zays, they make some of the best batteries in the world and it's how we power most of our creations. We've separated... <laughs> so, we've separated each corner of the hoverboard such that if an ESC fails and it blows up, it won't damage any of the other ESCs in the chain. 8 and 6 are on one power system and 7 and 5 are on another. To actually communicate with the ESCs and control them, we'll be using this wireless receiver and controller. The wireless receiver and Arduino combo will send a PWM signal to act as a throttle input to all the ESCs. In other words, if I pull the trigger, we're going to be hovering. Everything checks out. Just one test left to do. Let's see if it hovers. All right, so I haven't really done much on this project, so uh, they've elected that I get to hold it when it turns on in case something goes wrong. Jimmy, what happened? I don't know. I replaced all the ESCs. They're all brand new. Worked perfectly fine on the bench test, so I guess I'm working late tonight. We always get asked how to get started with engineering, which is why we're super excited to partner with KiwiCo again and give you guys 50% off your first monthly crate. KiwiCo wants kids to have the creative confidence to tackle problems with no one right answer. 
helping them become fearless innovators to not just make a project, but to make a difference too. They create these super cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids of all ages to concepts of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Each box, just like this one, includes all the supplies needed, fantastic instructions, and an educational magazine to promote further learning. With eight subscription lines, you'll be able to find the right crate for your kid's age and abilities, putting them on the path to becoming a hacksmith just like me. I might not have any kids myself, but after building a few of these crates myself, I can't think of a better way to teach others how to make things. I guarantee you'll definitely have some, whoa, awesome moments with these crates, leading to even bigger, whoa, awesome discoveries tomorrow. Check out kiwico.com slash hacksmith50 for 50% off your first crate, any crate. Just click the link in the description below and you'll be helping support the channel as well. Any luck, Jimmy? Oh, Daryl. Daryl, I got it figured out, man. It's the ESCs on startup. ESCs? Okay, let me explain, let me explain. It's really simple. Look here. Uh-huh. This is the amount of drag the wheels encounter at the startup, okay? The closer these wheels are to the ground, the more resistance they face, okay? Okay, so there's drag. That's a big amount of drag, you see that? Analogy here, maybe I know you're a little bit slow, so I got something to explain for you. A car on a hill. The car. The bigger the angle, uh -huh. the more power you need. Now, our ESCs, they're only rated for 190 amps. Obviously, the more resistance they encounter, the more current they need to pump out. Okay, Jimmy. And as soon as they start up, because that big drag, bruh, the ESCs, they go boom. Bruh. It's simple, right? Just make sure it doesn't go 190 amps. I gotta make sure this works. I need a test. This test rig is set up with the same air gap between the wheel and the floor as the hoverboard. We've connected an oscilloscope to an EEC and throttle input. This will allow us to record the current draw and the throttle during a ramp up. The ESC can only handle about 190 amp burst. So basically, we need to make sure that the threshold is at or below that. I've got this old 80s style watch. Kind of looks back to the future-esque. I'm going to be using this to record the amount of time it takes to reach 100% throttle. To sum it up, we need a throttle input to reach 2 milliseconds, which is the equivalent of 100% throttle, and the current can't spike over 190 amps. The watch will tell us how long it takes to do that. Time to test it out. Big Scott! To get our wheels to 100% throttle without exceeding 190 amps, it took us 8 seconds. On our hoverboard, the ESCs are what control the motor, and I can program them to take 8 seconds to ramp up to 100% throttle. Problem solved! But before I implement this on the board, I really want to make sure this is actually accurate. I don't have that many ESCs left. So, I'm going to be testing this a bunch more times. After a thousand tests, it's safe to say that an 8 second ramp up is accurate for a board. Let's program it in. We're about to do our fourth hover test. Hopefully this time actually works. Three, two, one. Holy Holy crap. That was hovering. Did, did you see how um, high it was? Yeah. Honestly, a massive relief. Uh, I've put a lot of hours into this project, more so than I'd like to admit. And uh, just seeing that hover, honestly, just makes me really happy. It's a little bit on balance, but I think once we get some weight on top, it'll be pretty stable. Three, two, one. It's warping the plate so bad. That's probably 60, 70 degrees. Dude, look at the plate. It's warping so bad. <laughs> that was a great success. Well, as soon as we put on the sandbags, it was a lot stable, a lot more stable rather than the first test. The eighth inch aluminum plate that we used got so hot from the eddy currents, it actually started to warp. This is basically a 10 kilowatt induction stove. Let me demonstrate. OK, 
Okay, I think things are gonna go on fire if I don't turn it on. All this heat caused thermal expansion, which is why the plate warped during the test. We're gonna need to buy a thicker plate to help distribute the heat better. Time to buy a new floor. I feel like uh, one of the kids in Miss Frizzle's class in the Magic School Bus when they erase like friction. They're like, have fun kids. Pew. All right, that was freaking awesome. We made our very own hoverboard and it actually works. It was a ton of fun riding it. Pretty difficult considering it's kind of like riding a skateboard with no friction, which is kind of a challenge. Uh, remind me of that episode of Magic School Bus back in the day when the kids got to play in the gymnasium with no friction on the floor, and it was definitely an experience, but fantastic job, Jimmy. Um, building a hoverboard is no short order. I'm pretty sure it's been the most expensive project this year, too, and we've definitely run into a fair share of problems, but you figured them out, we got it working, and we did it by the end of 2020, so awesome work. In recognition for your overuse of company resources for the Back to the Future hoverboard, we are reluctant to present Jimmy Zao with the most expensive project of the year award in the Science and Technology Division.